It's thought that the first representation of Jesus' face as we know it was inspired by a first source, a first icon. Ido Etienne Rome senior contributor Paul Bade has dedicated much of his life to tracking it down. He's a sort of Catholic equivalent to Indiana Jones. He says that to find the true face of God, we should not only look for it in the Bible, but also in the Mass, specifically in the Liturgy of the Eucharist, when Jesus himself is made present. It formed part of the liturgy, inasmuch as when it came to the old altars in the old rite, the Ritus Latinus, Latin rite, the altar was not a table, it was a funeral bench, like there is at the tomb of Christ, as there is in the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. It was a bench on which Christ lay, and the altars were graves. They were not tables. And then there was the great tablecloth. That was the burial shroud. That was the syndone, and the small corporal that touched the host, that touched the face of Christ, was the Volto Santo, il Sudario. Volto Santo, il Sudario. That sindone, or shroud, that covered Jesus' body in the tomb is kept in the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in the northern Italian city of Turin. And the sudario, or sudarium, that covered his face, also known as Veronica's veil, is also in Italy. There are several veils in existence that could be the sudarium. Two in particular draw the most attention. One is the veil kept under lock and key in St. Peter's Basilica. It's shown from the balcony above the statue of St. Veronica once a year on the fifth Sunday of Lent, but is otherwise kept in a chapel within the pillar. However, Bade believes that a second veil hidden away in Italy's central Abruzzi region is the original. It's kept continuously on display behind the altar of the Basilica Shrine of the Holy Face in the little town of Manopello. Just as we see today in the Holy Sudario in Manopello, it has been folded four times. The very old name of this veil is the four-folded. We see today clearly four folds, one fold like this, then three like this. In the same way, the shrouds were folded over the corporal. The corporal is the veil that had always been in contact with the transformed Christ. As it says in the Gospel, that there was the veil, the sudarium, the veil that was on Christ's face had touched it. Bade believes the holy veil of Manopello was once kept in St. Peter's, but was smuggled away for safekeeping in the 1500s, around the time of the sack of Rome. While just as with the Shroud of Turin, there are endless questions about its authenticity, there's no question that it's unique. The fine cloth of the veil has no equal. It's made of byssus, also known as sea silk, filaments produced by a certain type of Mediterranean mollusk. The material, just as the image imposed upon it, surprisingly changes before your eyes, depending on the light. Scientists have found no trace of pigment, ink, or paint on the cloth. Christ's face is simply there. Though the veil is largely unknown today, it wasn't always so. Comparing the face of Manopello with Michelangelo's Christ from the Pietà, and with the most valuable work of art in the world, Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi, one can see the resemblance, suggesting that medieval and Renaissance artists looked to the veil as their source, the true icon, that first image. The face of Christ and the devotion to the face of Christ, which uh, comes from the arrival of the Veronica's veil, which leaves the, the Veronica, the, the woman who wiped Christ's face on the road to Calvary, and the cloth that has Jesus' face imprinted on it, uh, really begins to circulate in the 1100s. We begin to hear about it, see about it, we hear about it, and it, um, it, it's exhibited in St. Peter's as of basically the Middle Ages, so 1100s, 1200s, you begin to see it, th this idea of 
an actual image of Jesus's face. So we do have this idea. Uh, Jesus's face, as it is in the Veronica, is very similar to the face that has been that has been uh, created by artists over the years. And then uh, to confirm or to assist the image of the um, face of the Veronica, then we have the face of the Shroud of Turin, which is this negative image in the Shroud that, 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 that contains Jesus' body. And that really goes on a pretty regular display in the 1400s. So we have an image that that, that it turns out that the image that the Christians worked their way towards in the bulk of Christian art is very similar to the image of the man of the shroud and the image of the man of the veil. The similarity between the image from the Shroud of Turin and the face of Manopello is uncanny. If one were placed on top of the other, they would perfectly coincide. Still, there are so many questions. The veil of Manopello has yet to be fully tested for its chemical properties and age, but taking into account its influence on medieval sacred art, the image is indubitably a top candidate to be the so-called Vera Nica. Vera, Latin for true, and Icone, Greek for image. The true image, the Veronica together with the Shroud of Turin, which we're going to discover next.